First of all, I want to say that uh, Ray has been a hero of mine um, for many, many years, going back to um, the early 90s when Ray founded the Points of Light Foundation and invited me to join the board. And uh, when we speak of compassion and empathy, the great thing that Ray manifests is how do we actualize it? You know, how do we turn it from something we can all agree on, there's nobody who would say we don't need more empathy and compassion in the world, to something tangible. And the thing that, Ray, you have been passionate about for ever since I first met you has been mentoring. Mentoring is, is probably the key way to express um, empathy and compassion in a way that makes a difference um, to the hundreds of thousands in the States, millions around the world of young people who have lost their way. I mean, here in the States, we have over 700,000 young people in gangs. Nobody talks about it. It's not in the evening news, but it's a major crisis that if they had one, there's so much scientific evidence that if they had one caring adult in their lives, it would transform what they do and it would transform what happens in society. So that's why this um, movement now to, to have some form of national service, to be able to actually make service a common expectation for every young person is something that I feel very strongly about. I don't know whether that was something that you worked on. We are leaders for some projects or some stages of our life and we're followers, we join other leaders. In this case, I'm a follower of Deepak Chopra. <laughs> and uh, in the football team of my kids, I'm a follower of the leader there. So it's very important to understand that the role of followers at the very end is as important as the role of leaders. And again, just finishing the concept, we play the two roles throughout our life. And uh, we do it every day in different projects, in different processes, in different programs. I heard this uh, phrase from Nick Kristoff of the New York Times, and he said, but in issues of social justice or in issues of values, the people lead and the leaders follow. And that's been really inspiring um, to us at Invisible Children because for so many years, you know, we were just average young people. We were, I was 23. We didn't have any connections to anyone. Uh, but that message then, when you share that with young people, it resonates because it says anyone can be a part of changing the world. Just changing yourself changes the world. But the other point I wanted to emphasize, Ariana, that you said that I thought is so needed in, for a message to, to, to reach young people is the definition of success. Because when I look at my own life, I wanted to do well. You know, I was, I was high achieving, I, I was ambitious, I got gr good grades, and that, it feels like you just are on a natural path. You're not even given a choice. It, it's how it feels. It wasn't a conscious choice. I want to go and be successful in the traditional way. And so, it, it, finding ways that we can all be mentors and role models to young people so that we give them a different thing to aspire towards. Uh, one of the things I always say when I speak to because I always speak in high school gymnasiums, this is a little different setting, but I talk about how there's 10 million millionaires in the world right now. 10 million. It's not that special. You know, and I say, but how, <laughs> how rare is it to find someone that's doing something of real significance and value, doing things that are associated with love and empathy and compassion and justice? Um, that is like the, the holy grail that we want kids to aspire towards. Ben you, ben, you might want to say a word or two about with these 10 million young people who follow Invisible Children and on the heels of what you've done with Joseph Coney, along the lines of what Deepak said, what your plans are with respect to taking, taking on the subject of empathy. Yeah, we're really interested in finding a way to 
connect young people's hearts and values far past trying to stop the violence of the LRA. That's really the phase that we're in as an organization. So like what Alex talked about with the, a new social network that connects people around opinions and meaningful conversations, we're really interested in doing that through media, uh, by telling powerful stories, using our strength, which is filmmaking, which is you know, creating messages that just spark that uh, spark <laughs> uh, in people so that they actually care. You know, a, a young person, if you go on a high school campus right now, there's, there's three questions, you know, that I think every human being, but especially if you remember back to when you're young, it's, do you see me? Do you hear me? Does anything that I do matter? You know, and it, and it, unless it is sparked, people can get stuck there. So, yeah, what we're excited about is raising the funds and then building a platform to send filmmakers out to find powerful, important, meaningful stories to do media pieces about things uh, that aren't just about the LRA. I think that's so important. I have two daughters in college, and I know that that generation is the most stressed generation, according to all the scientific data. And that's why we see this explosion of drugs, uh, both legal and illegal, um, suicides, you know, it's just amazing what's happened. I'm just talking just about people who are deprived uh, or at risk. I'm talking about people who are privileged. And uh, so I think what you are saying is really not just important for the people being helped, for the invisible children or all the other causes, but for the people helping. I mean, they need this as much as, and that is really something that is so key um, to underline from the beginning. I, I always wonder, uh, besides, for instance, that exercise of going within yourself, discovering and finding uh, that capacity to lead, others, frankly, comes from accident, like St. Paul when he falls from the horse, like San Ignacio de Loyola when he is hit with that cannon shot broke his leg and in the hospital he reacted, or maybe Nelson Mandela by being in jail and having the time to think about. Uh, when, I, when I see this video of uh, Nelson Mandela coming out of jail, he looks fantastic. He, he seems to be floating on the air. He has a, a, such a strength reflected in his body and the look he has right there that then he found his cause. And, and that's the other ingredient. You must have a cause, a purpose. Sometimes that's what uh, uh, awakens the leader. Uh, a right cause and something to do, and it awakens. And then you discover how powerful each of us are and how much we can grow. Uh, because you have that cause, because then you discover that you can do it, and you just do it. I'm wondering, Mr. President, with what you said before about how many people are killed in Mexico connected to the drug trade, and Ariana's comments about uh, what constitutes the new definition of success, using media and celebrities like Ben had spoken about and Ariana's power of the pen. Is it possible to define a new leadership in Mexico where people would look up to somebody else or something else, and could that reverse the problem? I, I think the same as it's going on right now in Egypt, violence, uh, and what is going on in Mexico. What needs is the counter medicine, which is love, understanding, dialogue, and that that's what I've been promoting in Mexico, but everybody still thinks that it has to be the stick instead of the carrot, that you have to eliminate them, which means you don't believe in them, which means you're convinced that those kids, 80,000 kids, 15, 25-year-olds, were born criminals. And that's not true. They were not. Or some other thing that they have it in their genes. So, the whole idea is eliminate them. And they bring in the army, and that's why we're in that war 
which will not have a solution on that strategy. We, we must change. So imagine that we send Deepak to Egypt uh, right now. <laughs> we have somebody here, Elza Malouf. <laughs> no, Elza no, Malouf, because... Who is actually working Because there. your thoughts, your beliefs, the way you convey the message, somebody has to start with a different message in Egypt right now, and somebody has to start with a different message in Mexico. Well, that's the whole idea, Mr. President, of having ambassadors in every country who are part of the Consciousness Project and the Consciousness Network. We have people in this room working in Egypt, women working in Egypt. We have in this room, Enrique Cusco, are you here? Where are you? Please stand up, so please stand up. So Enrique, and you should connect. He's originally from Venezuela, but he has the largest media distribution in all of the Spanish world. Talk about Discovery, HBO, etc. Right here, here's a person who's linked 100 million people. You are constantly breaching 75 million people and growing. Ray is connected with the most powerful people in the world. You, Mr. President, are known in all over the world. So if you put all this together, you put the media networks together, you have YouTube being filmed, PBS being filmed. This video should go on Huffington Post, on intent.com, on YouTube. Enrique, it should be all over Latin America. I mean, this is the time to change the conversation. And we have a global brain available to us. So we need to acknowledge when something is not working. And the drug war has failed. It has failed here, it has failed around the world. And for us to continue to find a war which has become a war on our own people does not make sense. I mean, look at what's happening in American jails, overflowing with nonviolent drug offenders who need treatment, who are not getting treatment in jail, who come back and get already in another cycle of drug abuse. So it's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results. May I suggest that we actually eliminate the metaphor of war? War on drugs, war on terrorism, war on poverty, war on cancer. It's a violent metaphor. So we should get rid of the word. We need creative solutions now. And creative solutions can only come from a shift in collective consciousness and reaching that critical mass which says, stop fighting the darkness, bring in the light. Deepak, in answer to what President Fox said, that we need love, we need to send you and you Not me, please. I mean, there are people who know much more than me right in this room. We need, Experts. We need to send some messenger of love to Egypt. Absolutely. Uh, and as you called all the media leaders, is that the ultimate outcome of the Consciousness Project, the Consciousness, consciousness Network, the spreading of and engaging in love or love and compassion? Yeah, you know, I have this thought that all these years, of course, I've written about love and compassion, but love without action is meaningless, and action without love is irrelevant, but love in action can create miracles. And as Ariana has said, the time is perfect right now, because, you know, in the old days, um, in medieval times, the person who controlled the collective conversation was the person who had the loudspeaker in the village square. And then it became the major networks, TV networks and the corporations. But now we have what I can only call a netocracy, which will surpass all democracies. The netocracy through the social media brain and it's, equal, it's leveling the playing field, as you said. And we need to realize that and move really fast because one of the goals of this consciousness project is no one can do it alone. No one can do it alone. 
So when we start linking people who have the same passion and we start creating new neural networks for the global brain, then this is the time that the people, as he said, as Ben said, they will vote on major issues. We will have voting on the internet globally for issues like climate change, issues like uh, child slavery, issues like the creative solution for, uh, for drugs or the violence around drugs and so on. It, if I may, and it's already happening. It's already. So for, it's self-organizing. Yeah, our, our organization, we have about three million uh, uh, fans on Facebook, which is the largest of any international human rights organization. We actually use Facebook way more than email as a mode to communicate. And for instance, a couple weeks ago, we had a student, a 19-year-old, who wrote an open letter, she posted it on Facebook, that basically said, our organization, Invisible Children, talks about the inherent value of all human life, but she challenged us and said, can I ask, how are you promoting the inherent life of someone, even Joseph Coney? And our whole staff, we read it and we were like, oh, yikes. And I wrote, personally, I, I wrote back on the public forum, in all sense and purposes, we're not. And that's changed our organization. Uh, you know, and I've never met her, I don't even know where she lives, but when you actually are able to both talk and listen um, to people all over the world, it's so powerful. So we can learn a lot from you. We can, the whole consciousness network can learn a lot from you and we can also help you. And with the resources that we have right here on this stage, with Ray's reach across the world with national leaders and kings and princes and everybody else that he, he can call on the phone, including our president, I think we need to take action now and not depend on corporations, governments, or anybody with special interest. Yeah. Anybody with special interest. Yeah. You know, Deepak, like in the case of the world uh, war, I struggle against the world prohibition. Unless it is to protect against actions of a third party or a third entity, but uh, prohibitions invite you to reveal in a way. Prohibitions are attractive to go against them. Uh, I usually use the example of Garden of Eden, the case of the prohibited apple. And that's exactly the one they went after, Adam and Eve. If they would have been explained that that apple had worms, they would not have eaten it. I think, yes, the, the new, and by the way, we raise also on the board of uh, Just Capital, and so helping us with that endeavor. And the, 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 the change is from thou shalt not to thou shall with love in action. I would just like to tell this story. It's not relevant at all, <laughs> but I'll never have this chance again. <laughs> so about 15 years ago, Deepak wanted to meet General Colin Paul. So I introduced him, and they had a very cordial uh, uh, friendship. But then about a week later, Colin Powell said, what are you doing with Deepak Chopra? Isn't he way out there? And I said, oh, he's a very knowledgeable doctor, and I love what he talks about. So over this 15-year period, Colin Powell would chide me about my friendship with Deepak. He would woo-woo. <laughs> and about three years ago, Colin Powell invited me to be his guest at a gathering of 2,700 Republican white men called Bohemian Grove. So I, I went there, and and you tell jokes, you tell stories. So Colin Powell was chiding me in front of 20 men about my relationship with Deepak. So, uh, and, I, and I was defending Deepak and, and he said, let's go to the water side. Today's speaker is a real man, President Vicente Fox of Mexico. You were there, huh? I was there. So we walked down and Colin Powell's leading us. 
We get there, we sit down, and Colin said, listen to him. President Fox opens up by saying, as my good friend Deepak Chopra would say. <laughs> <laughs>